If you want explosive growth in your business, you have to be working on the right things, and most business owners don't. The key to growing and scaling your business isn't by doing more, it's actually by doing less. I talk to so many business owners who are still stuck in the truck, and they're never gonna grow their businesses because they're doing everything. The easiest way to get from start to finish with your business is to What's up, Joel? Hey, dude, how's it going? Dude, doing good, how are you? Dude, I'm doing, doing pretty good. Welcome to Wednesday Podcast. Podcast Wednesday. Dude, Podcast Wednesday every Friday. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the podcast where we talk about what? Home service, business, stuff. Everything yeah. you need and to know to run. a bunch of other stuff too. A bunch of other stuff. But mainly everything you need to know to run and scale your home service business. My name is Jared Williams. This is my co-host, Joel. He's the man. Um, yeah, just for reference. I own a business. It's called Prospector Plumbing and Heating. Hey, look, it's right here. Dude, nice sweatshirt. I, I like it. I wore my swag today. It's looking good. Anyway, yeah. over the last few years, that business has done uh, $5 million a year in sales, well, over a million dollars in profit, and I don't know. We do like 3,700 jobs a year, $447,000 per employee, mm. which is pretty unheard of, uh, and it's awesome. And so we take all the stuff we've learned from running that business and helping other business owners mm. run their business uh, and give it to you guys for free. Yeah, because... Right here, every Wednesday on this podcast. Well, also, you don't... This business operates in Fairbanks, Alaska. Operates and a we long live ways in away. Florida. Correct. A long ways away. And Correct. you've been living down here for quite some time now. Two years. Two years. Two years. I've been living down here for almost a year to the day. Dude, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It seems like a long time ago. Seems like a super long time ago. Seems like yesterday, but then seems like a long time ago. How does that happen? I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, I was talking to a guy yesterday. Hold and, on. Wow, no, I'm telling a story. No, hold on. What? You can come back to your story, but today, I don't remember it. we're going to talk about explosive mm -hmm. growth. Mm -hmm. There's 12 steps you need to take to be able to grow your home service business explosively, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go through all 12 steps. Dang, 12? It that's sounds a like a lot, but it's it, the last few go quick. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Well, I was only going to say that. I was talking to a guy yesterday. Mm -hmm. He has just graduated college, and he wants to get his dad's plumbing business running well. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, back in the day, you know, in 2000. <laughs> and I was like, I thought about for a second, I was like, wait, I have that is 20 plus years ago. I know. And that, that was weird? the first time that I realized that, wow, my back in the day is no longer back in the day. My back in the day is like back in the day. Because this kid was like, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, but in 2000, you were what? Just starting like, high school? It's like, no, not even. I was like 10 or 11. I mean, in that 2000. was back in the day. Yeah, but in he, he, this kid wasn't born yet. So he was imagining the, his dad's business that he didn't even know about because he was a baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so he's like, way back in the day. Like, that'd be me, like, talking about... He was like, back in the day, like, when they had phone books. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where, like, I would use that expression to be like, yeah, back in the day, like, the 70s or the 60s. Yeah. He's using it as, like, 20 years ago. So it was this moment where I was like, wow. Yeah, because, like... I'm a little older than I thought. Paperclick didn't come around until, like, 2008. Really? Yeah, like, during the crash. Like, just before then. Interesting. Like, that's when everybody started switching over to Paperclick. Yeah, I feel like that has really, like skewed the plumber's mind when it comes to advertising. Yeah. Like it's really turned it from advertising as like getting people to know you and then like call you when they need you to like, I just mm -hmm. don't buy leads. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not buying leads, uh, there's not literally nothing else I should be doing. Yeah. And it's weird. Cause it's like, there's this fixation on this thing. It's super weird. Yeah. Because if you think about it, I can buy a lead mm -hmm. from a lead source and get a customer and, mm -hmm who has no, doesn't know me from any other plumber. Mm. Or I can get a phone call from a customer who knows about my business mm -hmm. through brand awareness, right? Yeah. And seeing our reviews and what we stand for and mm -hmm. what we're about. Which customer is going to be better? Oh, definitely that one. Harder to get, but much better. Yeah. So argument settled. Yeah. Don't need to talk about it anymore. Nope. Yeah. Okay. So that was my story about back in the day. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Step number one. How are you going to explode the growth in this home service business? So the real thing here is like, 
like the overarching kind of idea is that we have to become masters of our time. Yeah, so, enough said. <laughs> I think that's good, man. That was a good podcast. Okay. Um, we, need to, we, we need to learn how to become masters over time so that, because this is what happens, and I was trying to think about this. That mm-hmm. was why the long pause. A lot of guys, they start their business, okay, and they're starting to grow their business, and let's say they get to where they have some trucks on the road, they're on software, and they want to continue growing, and it just feels like there's so much stuff to do. Mm. And they don't know how to get it all done or what to even work on at the time. And so they start working on this thing, and then they get interrupted and need to work on this thing and then put out Mm. this fire, and they just feel like they're just all over the place and nothing is really getting done. The things that drive the business forward aren't the things that are getting done. Mm-hmm. And so they they get stuck in this frenzy, mm-hmm. right? And it really boils down to you have to learn how to master your time. Mm. But that, the learning how to master your time, that's the tough one. Mm. Because time at work, time at home, time in bed, you have to master all of your time. You can't just master it in one area, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. So step one, mm-hmm. I think, we're going to try and go through all these steps, and I'm going to forget some of them, but that's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we're going we'll we're to we'll cover the topics. Yeah. Um, step one, I think, and you can tell me what you think, but I believe step one is you have to Learn how to master your home life. It's like the idea of, you know, you can't, what is the Bible verse? You can't fix the, take the sliver out of your eye before I fix the plank in my eye. Mm-hmm. Is that how it is? Or mm-hmm. is it vice versa? Uh, you can't, t- you have to, I have to take the plank out of my eye before I take the sliver out of your eye. Correct. I have a big problem and I need to deal with my big problem before I start dealing with your tiny problem. Correct. Dr. Laura. Mm-hmm. Do you ever read any Dr. Laura? Like Laura, what's her last name? I'm thinking of I don't know. Like Schlesinger or no, Schlesinger. No what's what'd she write? She was the she wrote about <clears throat> she had the like talk show where women could call in and complain about their husbands and then she would yell at them. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> she, no, I don't think so. Dude, it was the greatest show ever because <clears throat> women would call in and they'd be like, My my husband thinks I'm fat. Mm-hmm. And she'd go, Well, are you? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a little overweight. Well, you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd be like, get your act together. Yeah. Go outside and do some exercise yeah. and lose some weight and your husband will think you're more yeah. attractive. Yeah. It was, it was a, she was very like, yeah, direct to, to the, the point. point. Yeah. yeah. And I worked with, uh, I worked with a guy, dude, and he was weird. Mm. And I'm surprised he gave me this. You know, the guy, this guy was weird. And I can't even remember his name. Tell me, maybe tell me some of the things he said, and if I remember his name, I'll let you know. I don't hardly remember the things he said. Mm. Like, he would say weird, out-of-this-world stuff. What, what, like, did you meet him on a job site just randomly, or is he like... I was an apprentice Mm -hmm. working for this company, and he was the, he was like the guy that drove the fuel truck. Mm. And the summer that I met him, we kind of, we didn't have, we did a ton of, like, utility work on army bases, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he would drive out to the army bases and fill up all the equipment. That was mm-hmm. kind of his job, mm-hmm. kind of slash yard bird. Mm-hmm. Well, this year we didn't have any of that work, so we were working on building these condominiums. The guy I was working with, the mechanical company I was working with, partnered with a general contractor, mm-hmm. and they built like 55 condo deals, and we were there plumbing them. Sure. And we were doing all the underground, putting in all the water lines and sewer lines for the whole project, and he was there doing all the digging, all the operating. Man, it bothers me that I can't remember his name. Maybe it'll come to you during the podcast. I doubt it. <laughs> Stu. His name was Stu. There you he go. Did See, come I to told me. you. All you had to do was threaten it out of me. Yeah, I got Good your job, back, man. man. I got your back. I should have said you'll never remember it. Man, I think it was Stu, and I think his last name was Boatsman. Stu Boatsman. Cool. Uh, strange guy. Mm-hmm. Fun guy to work with. I had a lot of fun working with him. He gave me two books 
And it's funny because both those books change the way that I think about stuff. Mm -hmm. And thinking back to like his character and the fact that he gave me those books and that they had like an impact on my life yeah. is funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of those books was Ultra Marathon Man mm -hmm. by Dean Karnazes. Was this guy, was Stu a runner? Did no, run? not at all. Interesting. Nope. He just said, did he do hard stuff of any kind? N nope. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Nope. Hmm. Um, <laughs> and me and my wife read that book. We read it together every night. Mm -hmm. and, like out loud? Uh, yeah. We'd read mm -hmm. it, take turns mm -hmm. reading it out loud to each mm -hmm. other. And it was the first time we'd like heard of like running longer distances than a marathon. Yeah. And that's a good book. If anybody hasn't read mm. it, they should read it. Have you read it? I haven't read it. Oh, it's good. You guys should read it. Yeah. You and your wife together. She would hate that. She actually hates would the she? sound of me reading out loud. Oh, I bet. She hates it. Because you make weird pauses in your sentences. Yeah. yeah and then I'll go. So. She can't take it. We have this thing with Joel for everybody who's listening, because it's kind of an inside joke mm -hmm. that. Whenever we need you to say something, mm -hmm. like we... <laughs> like, hey, Joel, you should say this line that we crafted for you specifically yes. for this moment and, on videotape. And Joel likes to, like, say it in... He'll do, like, three words, pause. <laughs> three words, yeah. pause. Mm -hmm. Three words, pause. So if you read like that, I can't blame your wife. Yeah. It, sometimes I read pretty good. Do you? <laughs> like, to my kids, especially if I'm, like, really feeling good and I, like, yeah. put some intonation in there, some mm -hmm. accents, you know? Yeah. Sometimes I'll sing the words. They hate that though. But that's sometimes the most fun. Yeah, please don't. Please don't do that. I could bring out the guitar. Yeah. Um, okay. Second book I got from this guy <laughs> was Dr. Laura's book, mm. and it was actually a good book. It mm -hmm. was like, it was like the no BS mm. guide to getting your life together. Gotcha. And her big thing was making your bed. Oh, interesting. She's like, if you can't get out of bed and have the self discipline to make your bed. Mm then how are you going to get the rest of your day going? Mm. So her routine is she would wake up, make her bed, exercise, all that good stuff, mm -hmm. and take care of herself first. Sure. That was her biggest thing. Like, I got to get myself taken care of mm -hmm. before I can take care of my husband and my family and all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, the, and so I think step one, you have to learn how to take care of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You I can't, agree. like... If you don't have your personal finances in order, mm. there's no way your business finances are going to be in order, sure. right? If you don't, like if you can't go to bed on time, something as simple as going to bed on time and waking up on time, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to be very productive at work. Right. Uh, it's the simple stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're a mess at home, totally unorganized, mm -hmm. guess what's going to happen at work? you're going to be a total mess. If you can't get along with your wife at home, mm -hmm. there's no way you're going to manage employees. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have the the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think step one, getting your own life in order. Yeah, I think the principle is like you need to become adequately responsible with the smaller things in your life so that that will dictate how you're going to handle the larger things in your life. Yes. Like if there's a gap of responsibility where you're not being responsible, then that will come through in your business because you're responsible for literally everything in your business. I agree. And I, I completely agree with you that the more consistent you are in your life, just in general, mm -hmm. the better outcomes you'll have in whatever you undertake to accomplish. I agree. So like if you want a really good business <coughs> and you're not sleeping well, it's going to be hard. It's going to be like, real hard. Or like if you have marital strife, it's going to be hard. It's going to be real hard. Like I've worked with guys and I've worked under management who have had crappy home lives. And it, it was hard to work with those people because they would bring it to work. And then I would have to, as an employee, I would have to deal with it. Yeah. And <clears throat> it's just hard to get when, like when I show up and I'm like, I'm ready to get some work done. Like let's do stuff. And then I got to yeah. deal with my GM who's got issues and he's like, Oh, sorry. I was just drinking all the time. And I'm like, dude, I'm trying to get work done. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on, like get your life together. Like you're supposed to be my boss and you don't have your life together. Isn't that annoying? Yeah. The, one of the most annoying things is to go to work and work for somebody who doesn't have their crap together. Yeah. It's pretty obvious too. It's one of the worst things. Well, it also gives this thing. It's like, where's this company going if the boss man who owns this whole thing mm -hmm. isn't even like has his life together? Yeah. It's like, you know, if you're listening to this and you're having trouble like holding on to employees, probably the best place to start would just look at your own life. 
hands down. And then you can also always run the test. Like, would I want to work for me? Oh yeah. Like, would I want to get paid what I'm paying these guys? And then ask yourself why? Yeah. Why would I, why would I work for my company? Yeah. And yep. if like, you have to be honest, brutally honest. Like, I guess sort of with what we're talking about, it's really important to actually be honest with yourself. Correct. To recognize that some things in your life are actually not helpful. Yep. And everybody listening to this knows this. Yep. And they know the things that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And guys, it's just time to quit it. Mm-hmm. Like I talked to a guy earlier this week and it was a funny call because he didn't have a plumbing business. He just called in to simply say that he thinks you're really smart. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I'll pass that along. We got him fooled. Yeah, I know. <laughs> got him. If he listens to this, it'll be great. Got it. <laughs> but I, um, it was cool because I told him, I just said, I just took the opportunity to just have a call with him and have a conversation and uh-huh. see where he's in life, what I think he should do with his life, blah, 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 blah. Cool guy. And uh, yeah, he's a cool guy. Obviously. Yeah, I think he'll- Has uh, to be. Uh, too. Of course, if, he's, <laughs> if he booked a call on our calendars, he's a cool guy. That's what I say. Um, but really, I just, I told him, I was like, first, you have to get rid of your vices. Like, in my opinion, there's no acceptable vice. No, there's not. Like if if like if you're listening to this and I would say if you're like smoking cigarettes, if you drink too much, yep. If you well, I don't know, like you're mad at your wife all the time or she's mad at you, or your kids don't like you, like those are all unacceptable. Agreed. So like take the steps to not do those things because they're not going to help you have a good business. Nope. It's going to make it harder. And business is already hard. Here's the thing, most people that have those kinds of vices, they end up going into business and then they end up going out of business, even if they like, even if they end up like being very successful and selling their business and all that stuff, they end up with either the business <laughs> or the home at life. Yeah, sure. And they don't have both. Yeah. I've seen way too many guys st- start businesses, grow their businesses, be very successful, but then get to the end of it and their kids don't want to talk to them. They're divorced. Yeah. And they have nobody to, live the rest of their life with. Yep. Millions of dollars sitting in their mansion in their probably not their mansion, but their ranch in Texas all yeah. by themselves, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. Uh, it is kind of sad because it's like even looking from the outside where it's just like, oh, so you're very wealthy. Like, yeah, I'm super wealthy. It's like, do you have a wife? Like, no, nah, we divorced. How come? Well, because of I had to get all this money. Yeah. And you're like, oh. You can have both. Yeah, it's like you can do both. Like you can be married, have a very good marriage, be a very good dad. Live a very productive life, be healthy, be fit, and make money. It's possible. Yes, those things are all possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you're a good example of that where you've achieved those to varying degrees, but more or less achieved those. Somewhat. And you're still... And you're still... I've definitely learned my lessons. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I was... So historically, you know, I wasn't very good at managing my time. So when I grew my plumbing business... Like if you get, and I've said this before, if you go to our website, prospectorplumbing.com, <laughs> and you look at the video on mm-hmm. there, there's a video of me, and I filmed that video right before we moved, mm-hmm. right before we moved to Florida. And so- Yeah, like 15 years ago? Like two years uh, ago. Yeah. And so I'd mm-hmm. spent the last probably two years, my sole focus was this plumbing business. Two years previous to your move, right? Two years previous to my okay. move, Yep. I didn't exercise, I didn't care what I ate, and I didn't take care of myself, like my my mental self, my spiritual self. I neglected all of that and put everything into the business mm. unnecessarily. Sure. I could have done all of them. Mm-hmm. The business would have been just fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I chose to do that mm. because I didn't know, right? Mm. Um, you didn't know that you had a different choice yeah like you felt like that this was the only way to do it yeah yeah and so you look at what like when i watch that video Mm. i look at that video and i go holy crap that guy looks terrible like he looks his neck is smaller Mm -hmm. his arms are smaller his eyes look like they have giant like black bags underneath them Uh i was like dang man i look terrible Mm -hmm. um that's just kind of funny Mm. But uh, yeah, you don't. That doesn't have to be you. Mm. Like you can do them all. There's no reason for it. Yeah. So what do you think is like the main factor in like doing them all? I guess making. I mean, following these twelve steps that we're about to go through. Mm. And that the thing is, like back then, I didn't know how to master my time. 
Sure. So to me, I had all this stuff that had to get done and I felt like it all had to get done today, mm-hmm. but that was impossible. Mm-hmm. So instead of thinking about what I had to do and mastering my time, I would spend every waking moment working on my giant list of stuff that had to get done. Mm-hmm. And it never became a smaller list. It was sure. always a bigger list, mm-hmm. which is not something you're used to coming out of the field, mm. right? So mm. I'm used to going to work and it's like, hey, here's your job for the day. You're here from this time to this time. And these are the ones you got to get done. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a start point and then there's an ending point. And occasionally you end up working late because sure. something happens and whatever. That's fine. Mm-hmm. And then you don't work on the weekend. Mm-hmm. But when you own a business or, you know, I think even if you go in like switching from field work to office work. Yeah. Because when you are even like on a new construction job, you go in and you do something and you can see a physical result of what you've done. Mm -hmm. And even though there's still half the house to plumb or, Mm -hmm. you know, 90% of the building to plumb, Mm -hmm. you accomplished this thing today. Yeah. When you just start doing office work and you have all these individual tasks to do, you don't really feel like you're doing a whole lot, especially coming from like doing physical hands-on things that you can see get done to in the office working on stuff, Mm -hmm. computer stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a thing that you're not used to it. Mm -mm. It's a a strange transition. Mm Mm-hmm. And so you feel like you're being unproductive. You you don't like you have a gazillion things to get done, and you're right. not, and you don't know how to handle it. Mm-hmm. At least I didn't, um, and I feel like that's most people. Yeah, and especially because there's like you don't quite know what skill set to work on. Because sometimes when you go into office work, suddenly it's a whole new skill set. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, I don't really know how to use a computer. Like yeah. I know how to use one, <laughs> but like I don't know how to actually make it. Like I know how to like look up stuff on the <laughs> internet and like watch TV and junk, but like yeah. I don't know how to use all these individual programs and should I learn this or should I not learn this? And like there becomes all these options that you just sit there and you're like, I don't even know what to do with my life. Yeah. And I think what happens is then guys are like, well, I'll just go and do some work. Like I'll go help the guys in the field. I'll go Mm. find something to do that isn't this because I'm comfortable over there. And I know that in some sense that will drive revenue. Yeah. But what they misunderstand is like, yeah, but all that in the box work. They get their P&L and they look at it and they go, I don't know what this means. Yeah, no, put I'm it gonna here. Go, I'm going to go sell something. I'm going to make sure to make a note to learn about this or ask my wife or something. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm going to go do this over here. Yeah. I think it's really easy to sort of pivot away from like this intimidating set of work to something comfortable. Correct. I agree. Okay. Step one. You got to have your personal self in order to some extent, right? Yeah. You have to be able to function as a normal human being in order to go down this road of learning how to manage your time. Mm. And the reason is because your personal time and your business time when you become a business owner are all one giant thing. Sure. There's no I don't I don't believe in work-life balance mm. or Is that what they call it? Work-life balance? Yeah, Yeah. sure. It's all work and life all at the same time. I mean, yeah, usually when I'm not working at work, I'm working at home. Yeah. I I might not be working on work, but I'm still working. Yeah, life becomes work and work becomes life. And it's a weird thing, especially Mm. when you start to enjoy what you're doing. Oh, sure. Well, yeah, sure. Yes. So So you definitely have to learn how to like manage your time at that point. Well, it's almost like you have to learn how to apply your work to what at what time because like because like here's the misconception is like well i work for eight hours and i rest when i get home yeah but anybody who's got kids and a wife knows that when you get home it's not rest it's just work of a different kind or even if i quit work at five and then i go watch youtube Mm. for the rest of the night Mm -hmm. like i might as well be working (laughs) yeah sure you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and there's i don't think there's anything wrong with that Mm mm-hmm if yeah, I, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Instead I of en- just being like, well, if I enjoy work, yeah, and I still have, I still, you know, do all the things to keep my physical self in good health, mm-hmm. my spiritual self in good health, mm-hmm. my family life is in good health, mm-hmm. but I'm able to carve out enough time to work 12 hours a day because I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. And you're productive and you're accomplishing things. And you're not just, well, I got to work 12 hours because if I don't, then I won't dot, dot, dot. If I work two or three hours on Saturday, 
and my family life is really, really good. Who cares? Sure. There's no, it's not a balance. It's a, it's a, it's less of a balance and more of a, are you doing this well? Yeah. If, what do you, if you're doing one of them very well and the other one not, then it's an imbalance. I, maybe I can agree with that, but. Well, what about this? Maybe it is a balance, but it's a balance that you set individually. I can't come to you and be like, Jared, your work-life balance is out of whack. Yeah, because you work 10 hours a day. Yeah, that's not acceptable. Even like, though your family's totally good and all the other things are mm-hmm. good, I still think this is not right. Because mm-hmm. I think that's typically what happens when people notice a improper work-life balance Yeah, is they hear somebody's arbitrary structure of what work and life balance looks like. True. Instead of like listening and discerning in their own life, like, oh, I can't work for 12 hours because my home life won't tolerate that. True. So I have to get all my work done in eight hours so that I can dot, dot, dot. True. So maybe it's just an, it's, it's a work-life balance that you need to set for yourself. True. Okay. You want to know step two? Mm, yeah. Are you sure? Okay, now I don't want to know it. Now step I'm, two. I'm scared. I, and I honestly think that step two, and we talk about this a lot on this podcast, but step two is where a lot of people go wrong. And it kind of like we talked about the guy who gets his PL, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, man, I don't understand this. And he throws it in the garbage and mm-hmm. goes and does something that he thinks is productive, organizes mm-hmm. the parts in the shop, or mm-hmm. hops in a van and goes help somebody move something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but number two is you need to learn, you need to take time out of your day mm. to think. And I have, there's somebody I follow on the internet who I learned doesn't know what they're doing, calls it think time. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just time, like taking time to actually think about, what are you laughing (laughs) about? I I was just replaying what you said in my head. I learned this from somebody on the internet who I now realize doesn't know what they're doing. I did I talk? Did we talk about this on the last podcast? I don't. I don't think so. We've talked about it maybe a couple ones ago. I talked about it on one of my coaching calls. Mm. I paid a guy a hundred thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To realize, yeah, he has no clue what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he just keeps going for it. Mm-hmm. Keeps trying. Yeah, keeps batting. Mm-hmm. And that's why he's made it. At, he's way more successful than I am. Yeah, yeah, done very well for himself. Yeah, no clue. Just keeps trying. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's it. And you got think time from him? Long time ago. I, yeah. heard, I think I heard him mention it. It's yeah. a, it is in a book somewhere. Way back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you need to take the time to actually think about what you're doing. And this is just like once your personal life is in order, that's going to allow you to take the time to actually think about your business, right? Yeah. Because if it's not, you're going to have all these intrusive thoughts that are like... Yeah. Making think time unproductive. Yeah. So you need to set aside time to just think about the moves you're making in your business, mm-hmm. right? And so I like to think about this in, if you're in a maze, let's say you're in a corn maze and you can't see above the walls, mm-hmm. right? Your only options are to go until you can't go anymore and then turn around and try a different way. Mm-hmm. And then go down that way until you can't go anymore and then turn it around and try a different way Mm -hmm. and then go down that way. And it's much more efficient if you could take a minute and see the maze that you're in from the top-down perspective. You could say, oh, okay, I need to go left, then right, then left, pass two options to turn right, and then go left again Mm -hmm. or right again, and then I'm out of the maze, right? So that same kind of thought, you need to take time to kind of look at your business from that top-down perspective and write it down Mm. and just say, okay, what are the problems I'm facing in my business? Mm. Or what what are my goals for my business? Where do I want it to, like, what do I want it to, what do I want to happen? And then what are the things that are either causing those problems or the things that are standing in the way of me getting to my goals? And what are the next steps that I need to take in order to get to where I want to be or in order to solve the problems Mm -hmm. that I have Mm -hmm. and think those through, Mm -hmm. okay? Because that's going to give you, and you want to think them through like all the way to an actionable step that you can take 
to improve or to reach the next step Mm -hmm. or to solve the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So that every time you do this, you're coming up with four or five things that are things that you can get to work on right away and implement and then move forward. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do it again. Hmm. That way you're taking your goals and where you want to be and you're basically breaking them down into today. Mm. What are the things I can do today that are stopping me from getting to where I want to be in a year? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do you do this every day? So I would do this every day, but oftentimes what ends up happening is you come up with four or five things that you have to work on for weeks. Yeah, sure. So it's like, okay, I can do this, but it's going to take me three or four days to get this thing done. Mm-hmm. It's going to take me four or five days to get this thing done. And, you know, another four or five days to get this thing done. Well, there goes three weeks. Mm. So you don't necessarily have to rethink about your business, but I would take the think time and maybe it's just 10 minutes. Sure. Right. You might have to think harder like the first initial time. Sure, to come up with this. And this list could be pretty big. And so yep. and it might maybe, take you some time to like parse out all the different parts of it. And maybe once a month, you'll need to take a longer amount of time to really think about things and mull things over. But typically on the day-to-day, it's, okay, these were my goals. This is still my goals. Mm-hmm. And these were the things standing in my way. And these are still the things standing in my way. And here's my action items. And I still got to get these done. Mm-hmm. Okay. And... That's where I would move into step number three is I would do this in the morning to reset your mind Mm. daily on the things that need to get done. Because we go throughout the day and there's all sorts of stuff going on and we get emails and text messages and guys do stuff and things happen and we get side railed, right? Mm. And we lose focus on, number one, what our goals are. Mm -hmm. And number two, what are the things that we actually need to be getting done? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now (coughs) you have, you not only have this, like your home life is fairly in order. Mm -hmm. You've thought about your business and what are the few things that you can work on to really push this thing forward. And you've developed a list of those things. And you're reminding yourself of where you're going and the things you need to do to get there every single day. I would write those down in a journal every mm-hmm. day, every morning. Like the same, like the same, like new page, same thing as the same thing day before. And same thing. I would write it down, put it in my brain. I go, these are the things I need to get done today. Mm. That's it. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Super powerful. That alone. Just doing that. Sure. The think time, and I'll we'll call it, I like to call it, you're like taking your focus, like your mm-hmm. focus is all over the place, mm-hmm. and you're going, nope, I got to focus on these things today. Sure. These are the things I need to make time for mm-hmm. today. Okay. What was that step three? Step two. No, that was step. Mm-mm, step that two. was step three. Mm-mm, step two. Step three was journal. <laughs> write them down. Okay, that's gotcha. step three. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, write it down every day. Yeah, like make a habit out of writing these things down. Yeah. Step two is think time. Step three is write down. Write them down what you've discovered in think time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, and I'm saying these things. I'm telling everybody these things from experience. Yeah. Sure. This is what I have to do. Or this is what I have done. Uh, to stay productive mm. and get things done and move forward on things. Mm-hmm. And it, the further you get into business, the worse it gets. Like the worse your need for these types of things yes. becomes. Yes. And I learned these lessons way, way too late. It took sure. me way too long to put all this stuff together. Yeah. Way, way, way too when, long. When did all these things sort of come together for you? Like six months ago. Yeah. All okay. of them. Yeah. Like all 12 steps came together like they, six did months Did they kind of just finally drop into place and you're like, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that. Mm, but, okay. you know, it started yeah. with like me reading books like... Mm you know, Dr. Laura, mm-hmm. um, you know, health books like The Maker's Diet, sure. even reading Dean Carnazes and hearing about him exercising regularly, like that mm-hmm. helped me get my home life in order, right? Sure, yeah. Started eating better, mm-hmm. started exercising, mm-hmm. started like being like, oh, we can like 
change things in our life and affect our outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then I started journaling. Mm. And then I started realizing, I read a book called The One Thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And at the time I was like, this guy's, this book is boring. This guy's Mm. an idiot. And it it was a very boring book. And I'll save you from having to read it. Mm -hmm. His whole idea is like, come up with the one thing you need to be working on today. And work and make time to work on that thing. Sure. Which is basically what what I'm telling you to do here. Right. Think about your business, figure out what those few things you need to be working on and make time to work on those things. I like to keep them top of mind mm-hmm. so that I don't forget about that you need to work on them. That I need to work on them. Yeah. Right. Otherwise I will. Yeah, sure. Well, it's really easy for like when the problem comes up that you need to solve or the emails that you need to answer. Yeah. Like suddenly your think time can get carved <coughs> by and honestly, sometimes think time is hard. And so it's almost like, oh, wait, hold on, I got to check emails. And then suddenly you're like, oh, well, that's think time. Now I got to get to doing the next thing. And then. Dude, you should not check emails until think time is over. Yeah. Like think time should be a sterile thing where like yep. you put your phone away. You're essentially unreachable unless yep. somebody really needs to call you. And then. Yep. Nope. You just let everybody not know like, I am unreachable here. Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Step three step four. was... Step three is journaling. Journal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, step four is we start to get into like the nitty gritty here, okay? So in order for you to master your time, you have to understand what is taking up all of your time. Mm. And you need to have a good grasp on like all of the things that you either do or need to do. Okay. Hmm. So what I would do is I would sit down and I would make a giant list of all the things I already do every day. Mm -hmm. And then all of the things I need to do that are on my to-do list Mm. or things you should be doing, but you're not currently doing. Right. Right. Like exercise, Mm. preparing food at home. So Mm -hmm. you don't go to the gas station to eat, Ah, dude. et cetera, et cetera. Those hot dogs though. Dude, there's the, When I was an apprentice, we would go to the gas station and we would get the bomb. Mm. We called them the ass bomb. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, right. Appropriately named. Appropriately named. Um, So if you make a giant list, have you ever done this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So you make a giant list, Mm -hmm. literally like everything you do, like I sleep from this time to this Mm -hmm. time, or I should sleep from this time to this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I need to wake up and I need to have time to brush my teeth Mm -hmm. and get ready to go. Mm -hmm. I need to drink coffee, like make coffee, drink coffee, journal. Mm -hmm. I need to shower and get ready or shower and get dressed. Like just start to break down your day in little chunks. Do you you brush your teeth before your coffee? Mm. Let's see. No, I usually brush my teeth after I eat. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes, well, yeah, no, it's usually after. The first thing I do when I wake up, I crawl out of bed, I go brush my teeth. Mm. And then I go drink coffee. Mm-hmm. But what about like the minty coffee flavor? That's fine. It's better than bad breath coffee flavor. Yeah, I don't taste my breath. Yeah, your wife does. That's okay. Yeah. Poor wife. <laughs> Maybe that's why she stays away from me in the morning. (laughs) That is why. Dang, never thought about that. Okay. So once you have this list, Mm -hmm. right, that's everything that you do on the daily, plus all the stuff you need to do at work. Mm. Mm, Sure. um, And you're going to include the things that you thought about during think time on that list. You're going to put them on that list. And you're going to make a T graph, get a piece of paper. You could do it on a spreadsheet too, if you want. If you're super advanced, if you're super advanced, but you're going to make a T graph and a T graph is just a T on a piece of paper. (laughs) So you're basically splitting the paper up into four quadrants, Mm -hmm. the top two, like draw a line down the middle and then like an inch down, draw a line all the way across Mm -hmm. in the top left quadrant. I feel like I'm on star Trek. You're going to write recurring tasks. And on the right top quadrant, you're going to write one-time tasks. And you're going to rewrite your list 
based off whether these are recurring items or one-time items. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. anything that you do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, whatever, you're going to put it in the recurring task. Mm -hmm. You probably don't need to go out yearly. I don't don't think so. Yeah. Everything you do one time, like all the one-time things that you just need to get done that bogs down your whole day, that make you skip all your recurring tasks to get those one-time tasks done, go put those in the one-time yeah. task category, okay? Mm-hmm. And this is where the magic starts to happen. I like to do this next step in a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. I'll take that list. Actually, we got we to gotta go back. Oh, I forgot about this. <sighs> all the recurring tasks... If you don't need to do them, cross them off. Sure. Like you shouldn't have recurring tasks that you don't need to do. Right. Take those recurring tasks, go on Google, and get a Google Calendar. Mm. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna. But Jared, I like paper calendars. Dude, you cannot live your life on a paper calendar sure in this can. day and age. Yeah, come on. No, my wife tried it. It didn't work. Did she? Did she not do it right now? No. Well, because she got a job, you know. That's she, kind of in a digital world. We gave her a job yeah. where she oh, had to use a calendar. Yeah, I see what you did there. And then all of a sudden, she started using her calendar. It was magical. Do you think that when she stops that job, she's going to keep using her digital calendar? I freaking hope so. She better. it be interesting to see. We'll follow up on this one. I'm going to give her something else to do where she has to have a calendar. Yeah. Something I think she's arbitrary. learning to like it. Yeah, it's nice. It's really easy to like... What's nice about the Google Calendar is you can visualize blocks of time very yep. easily. Yep. And so, like, like for example, tomorrow we're running for four hours. Yep. So I can just go on my calendar. There's four hours that I am unavailable. Yep. And then I go, okay, if I needed to do anything in this time, I have to. I now have this big block I have to think about and communicate yep. to my wife. Yep. I don't communicate it to my wife. But I know. I, know. I, I communicate to my. You wife. know. You know. Some of us are. You know, on another level. Yeah, like me. <laughs> another level of communication. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you're going to get a Google Calendar, okay? Mm-hmm. You're going to download the Google Calendar app on your phone so that you get notifications on your phone for what's coming up on your Google Calendar. <sighs> and you are going to put all of those one-time tasks on your calendar. So you're going to block out when you're going to sleep, when you're going to wake up, When you're going to brush your teeth. When you're going to exercise. When you're going to exercise. When you're going to drink your coffee and do your think time and your journal. When you're going to eat lunch. All of the stuff, you're going to throw it on your calendar. And what this does for you is magical. Because you start to realize how little time you have left. Mm -hmm. Once you do all the things that you just have to do Mm -hmm. every day to get life done. Mm-hmm. And it's really the things that you need to do to be like a productive human being right. at work. Yes, you can skip exercising one day. Yes, you can skip eating healthy one day. Mm-hmm. But if you do that every day for a long time, it's going to hurt your work productivity. It's going to hurt your ability to be a good dad. It's going to hurt your ability to be a good husband, right? Or even like... Long term, if you forget it long enough and yet you still become successful, then you're going to be like unhealthy. You're going to be fat. You're going to probably have heart problems and your family's going to love you less. And it's not, it's not going to be this rewarding thing because like rich people can be very sad too. Yep. You know, like rich people struggle because they have all the things they want. They're like, is this it? Yep. I don't know what to do with myself now. Don't be that guy. No, there's more to life than just working and making money. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can sort of keep that balance the whole time, then it, it, well, I think it also adds enjoyment to the process. Uh Like, I think if we can't find. That's that's step 12. Oh, is enjoying the process? Okay. I won't. Okay. Okay. Forget I said that. Spoil it. Yeah, forget I said that. Damn, spoilers. Gosh. (coughs) This is hard. Okay. So, this is what's going to happen is you're going to look at your calendar and it's going to be full of stuff, like real full. (laughs) And. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you're going to go, no wonder I can't get anything done. I don't have any time left or I have very limited time left. And what that does for you is it makes you realize how valuable your time is. And so when you 
get off work and you go home and you watch three hours of Madam Secretary, which I've been doing <laughs> the last like four nights in a row. Have you been putting it on your Google calendar though? No. Like, now it's Madam Secretary <laughs> no. time. Big block of time. No. Oh, come but on, Jared. you start to realize, oh man, I waste a lot of my time. So you start. Oh, to... Madam Secretary is not time wasted. Well, I'm not saying it is, but. Okay, good. Whew. But Checking. when you do that, you start to think about your time differently. You start mm. to have a different understanding of the time that you have available. Mm. And so you will naturally become more efficient with your time. I would hope you would be. You'll naturally look at your calendar and go, can I shorten any of these time frames mm. or stack things in an order where it's a better flow so that I can gain 30 minutes here? Mm -hmm. 30 minutes a day gained, that's a lot of hours. Yeah. that you gain in your life, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So that gets rid of your recurring tasks. You have them on your calendar. Yeah, sure. They're, they're all there. They're, they're all, all there. You don't have to think about them again mm -hmm. until you add other recurring tasks or you change your recurring tasks sure. out, which happens, right? You have to revisit this yeah, every of course. time. There. And when you put those recurring tasks on your calendar, you have to learn how to live and die by your calendar. Mm. So... When you wake up, you have to do the things that you put on your calendar. Mm. When it comes 4 o'clock and you have this thing scheduled that you're supposed to do, you actually have to do it. Mm. Otherwise, it does you no good. True. But I will say, you don't have to be a rigid Nazi about getting it done down to the exact minute that you schedule it on your calendar. Yeah, sometimes there's... Yeah, and you'll... I mean, if you're paying attention, you'll know when you're like deep in a very high leverage task and you come up to that barrier and you look at the next task and you're like, I, I'm i more productive continuing this task till I finish it or till yep. I get to this point. And then I can move on to this one and then, you know, juggle my time to figure it out there. Yes. It's a it's a balancing act, right? It there. is because there's it's or easy like, to then continually do that and then mess the whole system up. If you have an hour set aside for working out and your workout takes an hour and 10 minutes, it's yeah. okay. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, don't be like, well, I only have an hour set aside. My workout takes longer, so I'm just not going to work out. Right. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Or skip your next task or whatever. Just yeah. be mindful. It's not like this because it's impossible. Because yeah, here's the problem I ran into when I first did this. I was like, okay, I got five minutes for this, 10 minutes for this, 10 mm -hmm. minutes for that. And I'd be like, uh, uh, crap, yeah. I'm supposed to be doing this other thing right now. And yeah. it would drive me nuts. Yeah. I just had to chill out. That was it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so recurring tasks are taken care of. Now, you have this T-graph. You have all of these one-time tasks. Now, it's important to filter these one-time tasks and really narrow it down to the things that you actually need to have on your task list, okay? Because mm -hmm. it's like your to-do list. So what I like to do is I like to run these through. I put them in a spreadsheet, so I'll list out all the tasks and then I'll put don't do like I'll have a column for don't do mm -hmm. I'll have a column for automate I'll have a column for delegate which is my favorite column <laughs> and I'll have a column for do mm -hmm. okay and I'll go through each item on my to-do list and I'll check it either I don't need to do this or this is something I should be thinking about later not now mm -hmm. I'll put mm -hmm. don't do so and you'll be amazed at how many things you think that you need to do that could actually just not get done, mm. that are just a total waste of time. It's a lot of things. Was there some things that you can remember that were in your don't do column or your don't do column? They're just things that I know that would like need to be done. Like I would know, okay, at some point in time, I'm going to have to make sure this thing gets done. Like probably one thing on my list was I always wanted to make, and I haven't done it to this day. I always wanted to make like a technician training mm -hmm. like platform mm -hmm. where all the training was pre laid out. Mm. And all we had to do was start at the beginning, work our way to the end and then restart. Right. And I never did it. But it was actually on my to-do list, mm -hmm. like way back in the day. Yeah. And I had way more important things to think about. So I just checked it, don't do. Mm, sure. I'll yeah. revisit that later. Yep. Don't do it at all. Okay? 
So there's there will be lots of things like that where maybe down the road it will be a good idea. Marketers don't do. If it's like something that's blatant, like I don't even need to work on this, just market don't do and forget mm. about it. How do you know, though, like what is something that you should do and you shouldn't do? So there's a saying that says, don't do something that you can delegate. Mm-hmm. Don't delegate something that you can automate and never automate something you don't need to do. So, I mean, if you're looking at it and it's not like going to provide immediate benefit to anything in your life, mm, sure, don't do it. Mm. Put it on a list of like five month, five months from now list, mm-hmm. right? I know there's guys who organize, they have a to-do list that is like five months out. Actually, they have some that are like a year out, six months out two months out, one month out, one week out, and one day out. That's too much for me. Yeah, too much for me too. Can't handle it. Plans change too I'd much. spend a lot of time just like thinking about what to put in all those categories. Yeah, I'd spend too much time updating the list. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> My think time would be like half updating that list and adding things to it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, in a year, I think I would really like to open up this brand new branch, you yep. know, like random and stuff. And then a year from now, you forgot about it and you're doing something totally different. Yeah, I looked at it and be like, why did I put that there? Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. I can't think that far ahead. Mm. So, well, I kind of, with some things I can, but I don't need to write them down. Yeah, those seems like those are like the bigger, grander ambitions that maybe you think about just more normally. Yep. You're like, man, I hope in one year we'll be able to do this. Yep. So then you're going to go through that task list and you're going to go, can I delegate this to somebody else? Like, do I have to be the one that does this? Right? Mm -hmm. And if you have people on your staff, like if you have a CSR or a general manager, then can you delegate it to somebody else? Probably. A lot of times you can. Yeah. Um, And so then I would ask myself, okay, can I, instead of delegating it, can I automate it so that this thing gets done all the time? Like, and I'll never have to do it again, right? And if you can automate it, then you need to ask yourself, can I delegate the automation? of yeah. this thing. Can I get somebody else to set up the automation so yes. I don't have to do it? Yes. Because sometimes that takes a lot of time. Yes. Even better. Okay. But sometimes it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're going to have this big list of tasks. Whether you're going to delegate or automate, that's still something you have to do. You still have to delegate it. Sure. It just takes less time. Okay. You have this list of tasks and you know whether you have to do it, you have to delegate it, or you have to automate it, or you have to delegate the automation. Okay. <laughs> hmm Sounds sounds funny, but it's simple. Mm-hmm. Then what I would do is I would take that list and I would prioritize it. And this is where you kind of have to go back to your think time. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, what are the things that I need to be working on? Those should be top priority, right? But then there's also going to be some things that just actually really need to get done like right now. Sure. Like they can't wait and they need to get done, right? So you're going to move those up in top priority as well. And I would list these things. Like if you have 20 items, I would list them one through 20 in the order they need to get done. Mm. Because then what you end up with, I keep looking, I don't know what this coupon is yeah, on I'm my curious. desk. Yeah, I'm I was like the whole time I was like, are you going to, is this something you're really excited about? This is just on my desk. Stomp out hunger. It's the world's weirdest coupon <laughs> because... <laughs> It has their Twitter account, which is strange, and their Facebook account, but nothing else. It's just a weird... It's, it's not even a coupon. I mean, it's like, what, like a mailer? Mm, they want you to put food in the... You fill a bag of food to help stomp out hunger. It's a food drive. Put it in your mailbox. Food drive. Interesting. Okay. Pretending this is my list. <laughs> you now have a list of items in order that you need to get them done and you know exactly how they're going to get done. And on this list Mm. are the things that you need to work on to move your business forward. Mm. Okay. This list is a list that you can start putting that stuff on your calendar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, a good friend of ours always says you only have time for what you make time for. And it's, the, I freaking hate that saying, but he's 100% right. He would always tell me that, and I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about because I don't have time for anything. Mm-hmm. So 
if you want to come in my life and make time for me, mm-hmm. be go my for guest. it. Be my guest. Uh, and it wasn't until I understood this right here that we just talked about that I understood how you make time for things. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand. Mm, the, sure. You make time for the one time or for the recurring tasks in your life, for the things that you have to do to be a functional human being Mm -hmm. and to continue to be a functional human being Mm -hmm. and the things that you should be doing that you're not currently doing, Mm -hmm. those are done with your recurring tasks. You have to understand with these one-time task lists, you're going to get these done with however much time you have left over. Mm -hmm. And that's all you have. Yeah, sure, because you've already identified the things that you need to survive and to continue to progress in a positive direction. Yep, and the more efficient you are with your time, Mm -hmm. the faster you're going to get the stuff done on this list. Yeah, but you're not going to get it done unless you plan it out. But you're not going to get it done unless you plan it out. And if you don't get it done, then you're not going to get the thing that you want. So I would keep this list on my computer, and what I like to do is... I identify the things that I'd like, the top three things I'm going to start writing in my journal. These have to get done today. Even if it's like, you have to email this guy today mm-hmm. about this thing. Mm-hmm. That's going to go in my journal and I'm going to write it down. This is the this is on the list of stuff I got to get done today. And also during your morning time, I'm going to pull out my calendar and I'm going to see how much space I have left in my calendar. Where's... Do I have a two-hour window between when I eat lunch and when I got to go do this other thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a two-hour window. Let's pull up my list, the list I also wrote down in my journal. Number one is this thing. Can I get that done in that two-hour window? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm going to go in my calendar, and I'm going to schedule. Maybe I just need an hour to get this done. I'm going to put it on my calendar. And every morning... I'm going to take whatever time I have left on my calendar, I'm going to fill it with things from that list so that the things on that list start to get knocked out as I go through my day. And then I'm going to live and die by my calendar so that everything is planned out. If you do that every day, it's wild how much stuff you'll get done. Yeah, I think what's really helpful about it is it takes the to-do list and then just puts that in a calendar, which in my is always, for me, is way more effective than just mm-hmm. a to-do list because a to-do list is cool because you're like, oh, I have to do these things and you can check it off. Yep. But when I, because what I, I do this every day, as you suggest, I take what's in my to-do list mm-hmm. and then I find the random space in my calendar mm-hmm. and then what I do in my calendar is I label it Jared work because that's typically what it is because mm-hmm. it's work assigned by you to get done. I go, mm-hmm. this is Jared work. And then in the notes, I say specifically this. Mm-hmm. And then I can go, okay, and this time we work on this and then I can go check it off my list. But there's, it's much more effective than just looking at a long list and going, what shall I do now? Because mm-hmm. that's the that's where you become unproductive especially when you're just working in your computer. If you just have a list of things you need done, you're going to do the easiest thing on the list. Yeah, or you'll think about what to do, and then you'll go, well, first let me go get a cup of coffee, (coughs) or let me go get a bite to eat, and then by the time you sit down, you like are into the task that you have to do. Yep. Like, oh, wow, didn't have time today to do the thing because I didn't plan well, so I guess we'll do it tomorrow, but tomorrow you're going to do the exact same thing. Yep. And a lot of the times, the thing that you don't want to do, you just kind of avoid it because it's hard or weird or yep. uncomfortable. But if you got it done, it's the thing you probably do need to get done. Yep. But when you put it on your calendar and you just live by your calendar, like, well, now it's time to call that person. Yep. Well, I don't want to call. Yep. But then you get it done. You're like, okay, cool. We can move on now. Correct. Okay. And it brings your business growth and accomplishing your goals down to the daily. Mm, sure. Because you have no choice but to put it into the daily, right? Mm-hmm. And so I pulled up some, you know, we were, I did my coaching class yesterday and before the, the class, I spent a couple hours preparing slides and I like to make comparisons mm. f- so that we can get a good idea of, of things just helps visualize them. Right. Yeah. And so I, I said, okay, we're doing things on the daily. Like we're growing our business day by day, every day we're putting in the daily work to accomplish the long-term goal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 
if we can become effective on the daily, mm-hmm. multiple days in a row, become really good at that for a long period of time, that's what creates giant results. Sure. Right? Yeah, of course. It's the compound interest of being effective every day. Mm-hmm. Right. And so um, I pulled how many years has Jeff Bezos been working on Amazon? Mm-hmm. And it's been like 30 years. And I boiled it down to the days. It's like 10,000 some days Mm -hmm. that he's been Mm. building Amazon day by day. Little bit every day. Mm -hmm. 30 years later, 10,000 some odd days later, created Amazon. Mm. One of the world's biggest empires, Mm -hmm. right? In day by day. Mm -hmm. That's how it got done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's see, what were some other ones? Zuckerberg, Mm -hmm. 7,000 some odd days he's been working on Meta, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Day by day, building Facebook. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk, Tesla, same Mm -hmm. thing. Something like 8,000 some days. Day by day, working on Tesla, Mm -hmm. building things. Mm -hmm. Every single day, managing your time, Mm -hmm. being effective, doing the daily work. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to that you have to make sure that you're doing the right things. Yeah, well, that's why we have the steps in mm-hmm. that we just went over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. correct. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Because if you're doing the wrong stuff, I think most people probably make the mistake of like they – like, well, I guess there's a few mistakes. They don't understand how limited their time actually is. Sure. Right? And then – they assume they have more time than they have. Yeah, well, I can get this done of after that. this. Right. And so then they work on things mm-hmm. that don't really matter because they assume they have more time than they do. Sure. And then before they know it, they didn't get anything done because they actually have way less time than they thought. Mm-hmm. And they get in a whirlwind of, I just have to work all the time to mm-hmm. get stuff done. And that's it. Yeah, sure. And then if they don't really map out, They can also like map out their time. They Mm -hmm. can actually be very inefficient with their time. Extremely inefficient. But because they go, why work all the time? They're equating lots of activity to a large degree of accomplishment. Yeah. Which some of the most effective people, like Tim Ferriss, the guy who wrote like the four hour work week. Yeah. Like the guy built his whole brand on, hey, you need to pick the most highest leverage task and get those done. Yep. And if you get those done consistently, day after day after day, mm-hmm. you won't have to work as much because yep. you'll accomplish way more yep. than what you know somebody who doesn't do that can yep. accomplish. Yep. Very, very true. Mm. Yeah, dude. So what's the, what do we got, step five? No, that was like step 11. <laughs> there was a lot of steps in there. <laughs> <clears throat> well, okay, well, help me with this. And maybe this would be useful for the listeners as well. Like, how do you... And maybe we already talked about this, but how do you determine what is a high leverage task? Do you think about it? And maybe define for us, like, what is leverage? What does that mean? So, like, if you have a, if you, like, think about your business, right, and and where you want to go, mm. what you want to accomplish, um, or even what your problems are, like, what's stopping you from getting there? Oh, I have this problem. I have to fix it before I can get this, right? And you write all that stuff down and maybe you come up with six or seven different things, mm-hmm. right? That you could be working on um, or that that are a problem that's stopping you from getting to here. I would look at those problems and I would say, okay, which one of these, if I fix it, mm. gives me the biggest bang for my buck? Yeah, the biggest return on my the, time investment, perhaps? The, yeah, the biggest return on the time I'm going to put into this mm-hmm. or the money I'm going to put into this. Mm-hmm. Like me and you did this the other day when we mm-hmm. were... Mm, sure. We just ran numbers. Yeah. We said, okay, hypothetically, you know, these are our numbers from the past. Mm-hmm. So if we change, like for us, it was CAC. If we change CAC 5%. Which is the cost to acquire a Cost customer. to acquire a customer 5%. What does that do? Mm-hmm. Like, 
if we can change that, if we get 5% better at that, what is the outcome? Yeah. Based on past data, what is the outcome? Okay. What if we can get 5% more customers? We just increase how many sales we make by 5%. Mm -hmm. What does that do? And we ran through a series of things of like, okay, if we do this, what is the outcome that we get? And then you compare the outcomes and you decide which one is the best outcome. <laughs> yeah. Which one sure. is the most desired outcome, mm -hmm. right? And then it gives you some, okay, I'm going to work on this thing right there. Yeah, because it's it's the the highest, le it's the best lever I can pull. It's the biggest bang for your buck. The biggest bang for my buck, right? Yeah. So like if you're like, you know, if you have a problem that's stopping you from getting to the next phase before you get that problem. We could maybe use like a good example, like I just ain't got no work right now. It's a pretty common problem. I don't have any work right now. Common so that's, problem. I write that problem down. I go, I do not have any work. Yep. Or... I, I need a price book. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys think, well, I need a price book, so I'm going to work on a price book. Well, mm -hmm. if you were looking at those two things right there, mm. I need a price book or I don't have any work. And these are both your problems. You don't have any work, but you also think you need a price book. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. if I address the not having any work and I get flooded with work, can I make money without a price book? Absolutely. <laughs> Do I need the price book to make money? Not really. Would well, it be nice? Is it handy? Yes. Do I even need like software to write estimates? No, I can write estimates on a tablet. I just need something to take payments. That's mm -hmm. all I need. I can do that with QuickBooks. Yeah. Um, so the biggest bang for your buck would be to solve the customer problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got to get customers. The second I get customers in my door, then I'll start making money. Mm -hmm. Now I can start solving the other problems, mm -hmm. right? So it's just like when we like get people into our, our coaching program, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, you probably have a little bit of work mm -hmm. and you're probably not priced right. Mm -hmm. So you're probably not making good money on the work you're even doing. Right. So the biggest, the best thing you can do is to start charging properly so that you make a good amount of money on the work you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you're profitable on what you're already doing. Bam, money in the bank. Yep. Then it's typically the customer problem. Mm -hmm. Well, now you know how to make money mm -hmm. and you have a little money left over. Now we have money we can solve the customer problem with. Mm -hmm. Let's start doing some proper marketing for your company. Mm -hmm. And let's let that ruminate until you start getting customers. Mm -hmm. Then you start getting customers. And what's the next problem? Well, if you get too many customers, you need more people to help serve those customers. You need more people. But before you hire more people, <laughs> what's the problem before that? I got to learn how to run these service calls. Yeah, like, sure. how do you yeah, do yeah. this efficiently? Yeah. How do you answer your phone and, and book jobs? Mm -hmm. How do you turn those book jobs into sold jobs? Mm -hmm. How do you turn those sold jobs into, you know, money in your pocketbook? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I can bring a guy into this system mm -hmm. and he can be successful and bring money into my business. Mm. Well, now my only problem is I just have to add people and mm -hmm. the complexities that come with that. Mm -hmm. So I'll start adding people and start solving the problem of managing people, yeah, motivating people, getting people to do what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. It's just a series of problems in which one you solve first. Mm -hmm. You could write SOPs and solve the people problem day one. <laughs> yeah, I, you could give it a go for sure. <laughs> but, it, but it's not going to do you any good. Sure, yeah, because you're not doing any work. You could solve all of the problems in your business. You could solve you could solve the marketing problem. You could solve the people problem. You could solve the systems problem. You could be super efficient. But if you're not priced right, mm, sure. None of those matter. Yeah. And actually you won't even be able to really solve a lot of those problems because you're not priced right. Correct. Yeah, you won't have the money to. Yeah. Yep. So it kind of seems like if you're thinking about like a home service business and you have your hierarchy of problems, it seems to me that at the top, it's like, okay, well, are you consistently making the appropriate amount of money for the time that you're spending doing the things that you're doing? It's not even that. It's are you charging enough? Sure, yeah. Simply put, are you charging enough for your services? Yep. And then if you if you write this down and then you go, I don't know, that's, that's telling of something, right? Yep. You know what's crazy? There's... And this is something I thought about a lot. There's, um, I don't know why this came to mind, 
But I saw an Alex Hermosi reel the other day, and he said exactly what I thought about the home service industry altogether. Mm -hmm. People are so scared to be expensive. Mm -hmm. They're like, especially in the home service world, they're yeah. like deathly afraid of it. Yeah, rejection. Yeah. And like like low self-worth. Low, super low self-worth. It's kind of funny though, because it's like I talk to like contractor types and they're very confident, mm -hmm. but then they're very scared to charge what they yeah. should charge. So it's like this and, interesting juxtaposition. And they're, they have this belief that as more people enter the space, it becomes more competitive on price. Mm -hmm. But what really happens is that it drives ad cost up, mm. right? Sure, yeah. Um, and we've sure. seen that. Mm -hmm. Ad costs are high. Mm -hmm. And the only way to offset that is to be the most expensive so you can out-advertise everybody. Mm -hmm. Like in a market with intense competition you have a strategic advantage by being the most expensive mm -hmm. so that you can spend the most on ads to outdo everybody mm -hmm. in your field. It's a strange thing mm -hmm. that the way that home service companies think about it is there's so many people in here, so now I need to be cheaper than so everybody So I'll get else, all the work. So that I'll get all the work. And it, and it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing. Well, because maybe the thinking is like, it's like a weird math equation, right? I'm trying to think about how it would actually work out because it's kind of like, well, instead of doing one job for $200, mm -hmm. which is harder to sell, I'll do two jobs for $100, which are easier to sell. So therefore, I'll get more. And you'd be like, yeah, maybe if $100 is enough to pay all your business expenses, but yeah. it seems to me if, like the, the if you can pull profit out of that yeah, hundred dollars on two jobs, sure, it, exactly, because it seems like at face value, <coughs> there's no problem with that equation as presented. Like mm -hmm. I would agree that yeah, it's probably easier to sell a hundred dollar product than a two hundred dollar product yep. or service. But if a hundred dollar service doesn't pay you and doesn't make a profit, then it's not an option. So you have to take it off your list of options because it's not viable. True. So then it's like you have to like okay, well we can't think that way. So now we have to think differently. But I mean, here's what'll happen. Like, and we're kind of seeing it now. Ad cost is going up, right? So cost, especially like pay per click, sure. right? Pay per click ad costs are rising, and so we're seeing people ditch pay per click. Yeah, they're just getting off pay per click. Yeah, and going to all brand awareness, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. They're probably not spending enough on brand awareness to begin with. Right. But it's like if you were in the market and you were a big business in town and you already owned, like you're spending on brand awareness mm -hmm. and pay-per-click ad costs started to go up, just raise prices to make up for it. Mm -hmm. Become the most expensive in town. Mm -hmm. Outspend everybody on advertising. Yeah, Own that market. Mm -hmm. You have that opportunity only if you're more expensive. Right. Otherwise, you can't afford to own the market. Right. So it's almost a strategic advantage. Sure. I like it. Mm. Uh, Dan Kennedy always said, there's no strategic advantage to being the second most expensive. Right. That's such a good phrase. Mm -hmm. and he's totally right. Do you think that this is this? Because I heard this from a guy the other day where he's like, people in my market, they charge like, I don't know, something like six or 7,000 to like replace a water heater. Mm -hmm. He's like, I charge 4,000. Mm -hmm. And then almost the wisdom to him to be like, cool, you should charge 8,000 for the water <laughs> heater. Yeah. Like, and I think he didn't, like he, you know, like a lot of guys have moral reasons to not charge that much. Usually coming out of, they just don't understand that there's a reason that those companies charge that much. Mm -hmm. And it's not an immoral reason. It's like, mm -hmm. well, we got to make money as a business kind of thing. Yep. But it's like, okay, well, if you know the price of your expensive competition, mm -hmm. then charge that price for your services. Obviously, charge what you need to like figure out your own math. So I think when you do that, I wouldn't so I wouldn't necessarily think of it that way. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you do that, you're still competing on price. Sure. Right? You're taking their price and you're mm -hmm. saying, Oh, I'm gonna do it for that or more. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. I think you should just know your own numbers and not worry about what everybody else is doing. Mm. And 
run a business where mm -hmm. it's super profitable. Sure. Always try and drive profit and efficiency. Mm -hmm. Know exactly, like drive down costs, mm -hmm. cost mm -hmm. of fulfillment sure. yep. without sacrificing quality of fulfillment mm -hmm. and maximize efficiency because mm -hmm. that will lower cost of fulfillment mm -hmm. and maintain profit. Mm -hmm. Like if you can get 30%, if you can drive 30% mm -hmm. profit out of a business by being efficient, cost like cost effective on your end, um, and you're a thousand dollars cheaper than the guy down the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Your own numbers. Who, who yeah. cares? Yeah. If you're a thousand dollars more than the other guy down the street, who cares? Mm -hmm. It has less to do with them and more about me. Yeah. If I'm making mm -hmm. driving 30% profit out of my company as a home service business, that would be, you'd be top 10 in the United States. Yeah. Right. There's not a, there's a handful of company home service companies that drive 30% profit on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. If you can learn how to do that and do it at scale, mm -hmm. you'll be able to outspend everybody. Yeah, sure. Cause you have such a depth of, so when things become expensive on the marketing side, yeah, you can, you could, do you think you could maintain those margins even if you dipped into them to increase ad spend? Is that how it would work? You could if you rose, raise prices. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure, if you raise prices, yeah. The question you have to ask yourself is, can I get can I get the same amount of call volume in a cheaper way, right? Mm. If, And that's what you should always be asking yourself. Yeah. If this marketing avenue is super expensive, mm -hmm. can I use another avenue to get the same call volume for right. less money? Right. That would be driving efficiency. Mm -hmm. So you always want to be as efficient as possible with your marketing, but mm. at some point, the marketing costs what it costs. Right. Yeah, sure. But it's, and I think, you know, you can win by being the most expensive. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can win in home service just by being the most expensive. Sure. I think you have to be expensive and efficient. Yeah. And aware of your costs. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're expensive, if, if you're expensive and inefficient, then you're not going to be hitting. The like super high profit margins. Yeah, the reason, well, I think you're gonna you can destroy your profit margins no matter how expensive you True, are by being inefficient. Hundred percent, right? Even on like a CSR basis, like if you're yeah, if CSRs aren't triaging your calls and you're expensive, yeah. you can have zero profit. Yeah, or if you're or if you're just not answering your phone, zero profit. Or you got ten people in the office and five people out in the field, zero profit, zero. Yeah, even five people in the office and five people out in the field, yeah, zero profit. Yeah, so if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I'm like six hundred eighty bucks an hour flat rate and I don't have any profit, right? It's like okay, well, you got to look to the other parts of your it's business because you're inefficient. Yeah, yeah, sure. Somewhere there's an inefficiency. Yeah, you're a leaky bucket in some way. Yeah, so you have to couple the mm -hmm. two together, right? Yeah, you really just have to understand all the things that go into your business that participate in revenue. Yeah. And par yeah, and participate in profit. Yep. Yeah, and you have to be efficient. You yeah. create efficient processes in your company. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll just completely destroy profits. Mm -hmm. What do like, you like like the idea that um like if you did 3 million in revenue last year, mm -hmm. the money's there. It just didn't make it to the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Why? Something kept it from the bottom line. Yeah. And was everything that kept it from the bottom line appropriate? Or is there something in there that doesn't make well, sense? Well, no. If you have three million come in your business and zero made it to oh, profit, sure. gotcha. something is wrong yeah, in there. Yeah, 100%. Right? Something is keeping it from getting it to the bottom something line. Something is stopping it from getting to the bottom line. There's a block what is somewhere. It? You have an inefficiency somewhere mm -hmm. and you need to fix it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I hear this from guys. Tell me what you think about this. Guys will be like, like I heard this from a guy today. He was like, I told him, hey, man, if you don't get a good P&L, you don't have a scorecard, a report card for your business. And he's like, yeah. And then he told me, he's like, yeah, but, you know, we're not in debt. You know, we've hi hired these people and we're still, I don't think he had a P&L. So he didn't really know if he's still making money, but he knew he didn't have he didn't have to go into debt. They mm -hmm. didn't have to get business loans. Mm -hmm. But what he said, which was interesting, he was like, I hired an office manager to help me stay organized. 
just tell me what you think of that, that idea of hiring an office manager to keep you, the business owner, organized. That's maybe their only function. And I know that's kind of broad, what that person could do. I don't understand the whole office manager position in, I mean, it, it depends on the size of the company. Yeah, let's say zero to five million, somewhere in there. What we're I very don't, comfortable with. I don't like understand that. the office manager position. Like you can do five million with two CSRs and a general manager in the office, and that's it. I know that for a fact because that's what <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't need an office manager. There's there's just no need for it. Yeah. I think like the business Go ahead. And that's and you need to be on like some sort of software. Of course. Right? Mm, sure. Like that's... Service Titan is gonna handle mm a bunch of your tasks and everything lives digitally nowadays. Like, yeah. w- what is an office manager going to do? That's That would be my question to that guy. Like, what are you having that person do? And I would put him through the list. Like, can you like outsource that? Yeah, sure. To somebody cheaper than a full-time employee? Can you automate that? Like, let's, like, this is what I would do. Every position in mm-hmm. my business, mm-hmm. I would make a list of what they do. Mm-hmm. I would say, make me a list of what you do day to day. And then look at that list and run it through the same lens of, does this person even need to be doing this? Mm-hmm. Like, is this even something that we need to be doing? Right. Can this thing be automated so mm-hmm. that this I don't have to pay this person to do it? Mm-hmm. And then instead of delegated, can this be outsourced right. to a non-full-time employee where we can get it done cheaper? Mm-hmm. Or is this something that I actually need this employee to do? Right. Like this requires a human to think about and to problem solve within the system. I would also add, or can this be done by somebody else? Yeah, that we already have. That we currently. already have currently yeah. who takes care of other tasks. If a CSR takes over this paperwork <coughs> function, will that limit the CSR's ability to book the jobs and drive revenue? Yeah. Or can we then give the other CSR something? instead? Because what I think what happens is that guys will get really busy and chaotic because they're not doing think time. They're not making the time to actually think about their business. Mm -hmm. That they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. I just need to hire somebody to keep my paperwork in order. And then they go hire a $40,000 to $60,000 employee to just quote unquote keep the paperwork in order. Yeah. So that the business owner can probably go and do stuff that he shouldn't be doing anyway. Like probably like running calls or like answering the phones himself. Probably. And then it's just this huge weird problem that, Again, you do three million and you have zero in profit, and it's like, well, you hired an office manager and like this other person, and like, <laughs> what are they doing so that yeah. you can run the calls? Like, why yeah. are you running the calls? Yeah. Oh, because you're not priced properly. That's why. Yep. And then like you start to discover all these weird little problems. Yeah. It's the thing is like, it's not a complicated process. You have phone calls that come into your business because some somebody needs something done at their home. <laughs> yeah, that they can't do or they don't want to do themselves. So you need to have somebody that answers the phone and says tells the customer, "Oh yeah, we can help you with that. Here's a here's a time frame we can make it out to your house. Does that work for you?" Mm-hmm. So they need to be able to take the customer's information and schedule a job. Super simple. Mm-hmm. That's really all you need them to do. Um from there, you need people to do the work. Mm-hmm. So you need to have somebody that can go to the home, talk to the customer, see what their problem is, and then give them a price and fix the work. Mm-hmm. And then bill them. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then at some point in time, at some sort of scale, you need somebody in the office to make sure everybody's doing that. <laughs> right. And they're not creating weird tasks for themselves that aren't necessary. Right. But that individual deemed necessary at some point and then just made it a part of their thing. Yep. Like and every Thursday, it. every Thursday, I go down to the water store to replace the water jugs so that we can have fresh water in the office. It's like, oh, dude. I'd be like, let's get a water filter. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, but... You know what's crazy? Hmm. I worked at a place um, where that's what they did. They, would, they had water delivered to the office. Mm-hmm. They paid the water company to show up mm-hmm. once a week and deliver water bottles so we could put them on the little water jug and get fresh water. Mm -hmm. Make a bunch of mess while you're doing it. Yeah, and I never understood that. That's funny. So when I worked at the air service, we would have those jugs, 
and we would go to Culligan's and we'd fill it up ourselves. Two ramp guys would take time to drive in the box van to go fill up 15 jugs and then we would go replace it. And then we eventually said, actually, sorry, Jared, let me, re- let me restart this. We had the company doing it for us. Uh-huh. And we said, well, let's save a little money. Let's just pay our guys to go out on the clock mm-hmm. and do this job and then come and <laughs> fill water. Yep. And then like, so guys are like, I'm going on a water run. And there two guys are gone for like an hour. Yep. When there's like real work to be done yep. to fill up the water. Yep. And it wasn't until the general manager was like, this was stupid. So then he just bought, a filtered water system that tied into the water system. And yeah. then it was like, now we have filtered water right here. Yeah. And I was like, this is way better because now nobody has to go get stupid jugs. Yep. Like, like I don't know if anybody listening to this has ever tried to fill up jugs in like 35 below in a poorly, at the water joint, it's just like ice everywhere because the door's opening all yep. the time. It's 35 below, so everything's freezing. And it's yep. just like, this. it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. You and, know what we have at Prospector? Hmm. We have a Berkey. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Fill it up. You fill it up in the mop sink, mm-hmm. and you got fresh water. If you don't like it, bring your own water. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, just little things like that can just crop up in businesses, especially when you get a little bit bigger and you have employees who have tasks to do most of the time, but then they have these moments where they don't have tasks or they don't want to do the task they should be doing because it's lame work. That's typically what it is. And then they're like, I have an idea. What if? Here's the thing. Your employees are going to have all sorts of wonderful <laughs> ideas. Hey, sometimes one of those ideas might be a banger. That's sometimes. Why you, that's why you got to listen. You got to listen to your employees and take their ideas and understand where they're coming from. Yep. Make sure they're heard. And But uh, yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. But on the other side of that, you also have to understand that not all their ideas are good ideas. Mm-hmm. And just because they want it done doesn't mean it's something you should do. Even no matter how passionate they are about it. Yes, and you have to really, <laughs> like I, I can't stress enough how important it is to keep your business model as simple as humanly possible. And keep mm. keep reminding your staff, this is all we have to do, mm-hmm. these few simple things. This is it. Mm-hmm. I just need you to show up do these few simple things and go home. Mm -hmm. If you can show up, do these few simple things day in and day out and go home every night, this company is going to be very successful and you're going to have a job here forever. Mm -hmm. It's when you start adding things in, creating complexities, making things Mm -hmm. weird and wild Mm -hmm. for, you know, small reasons typically well usually it's reasons the person who created that system is expressing their value by creating a complex thing yes because they're like dude i'm a deep thinker i made this complex system isn't this cool yes and what they always forget because i do this all the freaking time i know you do is i'm like wow look at all these things i've done (laughs) then i and then i think and then i say hey jared look at this and you're like okay that's cool but why don't we not do most of that and just keep this top part and i'm like oh damn it you're totally right i forgot to keep it simple Keep it simple. It's, it's really, super important. And it's really easy to just make things really complex. Yes, it is. We just like to do it as humans. It were, it's a human thing. Yeah, it we're really wired is. to make things harder than they are for some reason. Yeah. Everybody does it. Yeah. You have to, and as the business owner, you have to be very aware of it. Yeah, because if it gets out of hand. Because you're going to do it mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. your employees are going to want to do it. And before <laughs> you know it, your business is going to be a giant mess because yeah. everything's complicated. Yeah, and that's why you hired four office managers. Yes, to do wild. all these things <laughs> yeah. that you don't even need to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's silly. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you probably could have skipped like thirty of those steps. It's like, it's like if you go make that list that we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. of what somebody does in a day, mm-hmm. and then think about like how many people touch one thing. Mm. If you can get those touch points down mm-hmm. so that one person handles all of one thing mm-hmm. instead of three people handling that thing, mm. you get so much more efficiency out of that. Yeah. Um, and you'll cut down on the people that you need in your business. Yeah. Silly. Mm. What was the 12th thing? Somewhere we covered 11 things. The there. 12th thing was perspective. Mm. Because 
you're going to have your calendar. You're going to have all this stuff. You're going to be driving forward. You're going to be pushing forward. Mm. But you need to keep the perspective of the fact that on your deathbed, you're not going to care about any of it. <laughs> sure. What you're really going to care about is that you chose to be happy, mm. right? Mm-hmm. That you're, you're going to wish you didn't let the silly business stuff get to you sure, so yeah. much. Mm-hmm. You're going to wish you didn't let it affect your mood and then mm-hmm. your relationships with the mm-hmm. people that you wish you spent more time with. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's important to keep that perspective of, you know, on my deathbed, what are the things that I'm actually going to care about? Mm-hmm. There's a mm-hmm. there's a book that some nurse wrote. She took care of people on their deathbed, and it was like the eight regrets or whatever. I can't remember the name of the book. But not one person in the book said, I wish I made more money, mm-hmm. or I wish I worked more, or I wish I was more successful, Right. And a lot of these people that she took care of were very successful people. Mm-hmm. They all said, I wish I didn't work so much. Hmm. I wish I spent more time with my family and my loved ones and my friends. And the one that got me was the people who said, I wish I chose to be happier. Mm. Because no matter what your circumstances are right now, no matter how bad your business is going, no matter how bad things are going elsewhere, you get to choose sure. your happiness. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, like uh, a lot of times when something was going bad at work, I would make the choice to be unhappy about it right. and let it affect my mood at home. Mm-hmm. And it's a choice that you have. Yeah. And if you keep the perspective of on my deathbed, it helps you to, keep that perspective of no, this really matters anyways. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a funny paradox. Like it's fun. It's fun growing businesses. It's nice making more money. It's makes you more comfortable. It's, mm-hmm. it's cool to provide for other people. Um, and all those things are worthy goals, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, we're all going to die. Mm-hmm. We're all going to meet the maker. Mm-hmm. We don't get to take any of it with us. Mm-hmm. And so when we get to that point, like, what are the things we're going to really wish that we worried about? Right. We're going to wish we didn't get so mad at our wife. Right. We're going to wish we would have done things differently. Mm-hmm. And you have the opportunity to do those, that stuff now, mm. as long as you keep that perspective. Yeah. So, yeah, step 12, very important. We should have led with step 12. For you guys, you made it this far. Dude, rock stars. Yeah, you guys get to earn the cookie. And the rock stars. And the cookie, I guess, is step 12. Right on. Cool. Thanks, Jared. See you, Holmes. See ya.